Hey, welcome back students. In this video, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to calculate the hydrogen ion concentration as well as the hydroxide ion concentration. And so the two equations that we're going to use are the following. If we want to find the hydroxide or the hydrogen ion concentration, we're going to use this equation here where the hydrogen ion concentration is equal to 10 to the negative pH. Okay, that's assuming they give you the pH value to begin with. The other equation is going to be the hydroxide ion concentration is equal to 10 to the negative pOH. And so these are uh, generally the two equations that we need to use, and uh, we can go back and forth. So let's go ahead and look at some sample problems here. What if you were given the following? What if you were starting off with an example? Let's say that they gave you that uh, the pH was equal to 2 and they want you to figure out what the hydrogen ion concentration is. So this is what you're trying to solve, and so we really don't know. But if we use the equation here, what is it we're trying to find? We're trying to find, in this particular case, the hydrogen ion concentration, which means we have to use the first equation that was provided to us. And so that equation is going to be the hydrogen ion concentration is going to be equal to 10 to the negative pH. In this particular case, the pH is equal to 2, so we'll put a 2, and that's going to be a negative number. Now keep in mind, even though we write it like this, what we're really saying is the following. That the 10 to the negative 2 is really 1 times 10 to the negative 2. Okay? And essentially what this tells us specifically is that we've got a solution that has a concentration of the following. And so notice we're going to go backwards now, a little bit of a review here from first semester. We're going to convert this number, 1 times 10 to the negative 2, we're going to convert it back to a decimal form. Essentially, this becomes 1, 2, put a decimal there, and then it's a 0. And so our actual number here becomes 0 0.01. And here it's going to be molar. Okay, so this is what this really means. So when you see a pH of 2, it means that you have a concentration of 1 times 10 to the negative 2, or 0 0.01 molar. Okay, in this case, they're all going to be molar, really but essentially this is what it is. Now let's do another example here. What if we had, uh, for example, a pH of 4? Well again, if we're doing the convention, let me just erase all the parts that we don't need. Okay, And so we'll try to fill these in in a second. And so essentially here, if we've got a pH of 4, our concentration of hydrogen ion is going to be 10 to the minus 4. Okay, or it's going to be 1 times 10 to the minus 4. And in this particular case, it would be 1 with a 1, 2, 3, 4 decimal point. So that would mean that our concentration would actually be 0 0.0001 molar. Okay, so these are different ways of converting pH to a concentration. But what are the, the questions we're asking us? Well, how do we find the concentration of the hydroxide ion? Well, in order for us to do that, we need to use a slightly different equation. And so let me go ahead and re erase this for us, and then we'll go ahead and start afresh. And so what we've got here, let's say we begin with a PA, POH of 3. And the, we want to know what the hydroxide ion concentration is going to be. Well, in this particular case, if we've got a, pH of, a POH of 3, our equation then is going to be the following. Hydroxide ion is equal to 10 to the negative P. OH. And what this means is that we're going to have 10 to the negative 3. Or another way of looking at this would be 1 times 10 to the negative 3. Keep in mind that all of these are going to be molar here and molar there as well. Okay, And so this is the way we would do this one. What if we had another number just to do one more example before we go here? What if the pH was an 8? And so essentially if we do have an 8 here, and so our pOH is going to be uh, an 8, so the concentration is going to be 10 to the negative pOH. In this particular case, it becomes an 8, not a 3. And the same thing down here in this particular example there. Notice in each of these examples, what we've done is what we've taken is the number, whatever it is, in this case pOH, and we just substitute it into the equation. And once we do that, we've got our answer. So essentially, we could do this for various types of pOHs or pHs. Okay. Now, the one thing that you do want to keep in mind is once we find this concentration, 
or once we know one of the PHs or the POHs, we can actually use it to find some other types of problems. In the next couple of videos, I'm going to show you how to use all these numbers to find all those different kinds of problems.